Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, today I'm going to go through a walkthrough on how to create a RoboBlockly activity. So first of all, let me sign in with this one. Um, if you guys are familiar with the RoboBlockly activity, you can always go to the activity portal. You can see all the stuff that's been created. In fact, um, if you scroll, you'll see some of these that I've created. Once you've started creating some, you'll have your own activities that you could then go through and, and, and edit them from there. But obviously, you can use activities that other people have done in the past, and, and uh, there's they're all ID'd by number, and whatever you create will be at the end. So if I were to, um, like, even if you look at the ones I did, because I just created at the end, they're kind of in the 700s. So anyways, if you look at the activity portal, the ones that will be first are the latest ones, so all of these would be, like, after that. So anything that was recently created will show up um, first on there. So anyways, to... Um, make your own activity there's kind of a lot of stuff that you've got to do so making an activity does require quite a bit of time and effort if you're unfamiliar with it once you get more familiar with it that's what this tutorial is for it's not so bad and uh, but um, it does require a lot of things so when you're looking for these things right here these are all the stuff that's required now problem statements isn't that hard you can just type that in here so you can just literally just type it in. So this isn't something you have to plan for, but it's something that you should already be able to do. And a hint is something that's also required, so anything with the red star is required. But you're going to be able to add that. That'll pop up on the screen, so when they actually run it, it'll, it'll show up. So if you just look at the list here, we're going to need to have a PNG, which will be a solution. So we want to see what the solution looks like, an actual image. Um, we'll also have to save the board as a possible solution. So this is important because there's more than one way to do it. In fact, most of the time, your kids will do it a different way than you do it. Um, and then also you need to have the um, the file in CH. Since we're programming in CH, even though we're using blocks, it's all programmed in CH behind the scenes. So you'll have to save that file as well. All right, so then everything else is just optional. These are for different solutions, for example. Um, but you also need to have a description of the activity in either PDF or Word document. So these are the acceptable formats for the extensions, OK? Now, the other stuff is all optional. So like anything else that doesn't have a star, if you look on here, is optional. The like keywords are used. Those are important. Those are, that's how people can search for it. You do have to select at least one grade. Um, and you do have to have a title and an author. Everything else is optional, OK? so. That's important to start there because if you're going to create a lesson, you really want to make sure that you have all that stuff ahead of time. So what I do, the way I've done it, so I've got my um, CSTEM folder here. And in my folder, I've got RoboBlockly stuff. So each of these um, things right here is an activity I created. And you can see the files are there. There's a CH file. There's the image of the um, what it should look like. So that's what it should look like. There's that activity actually I had already found. Um, here's the board and this is the description. So this is what um, the it just has to be there. So basically you, depending on how detailed you want to get you can make the description as important as or as detailed as possible or you can just get it there to show people like this is what it has to be because um, I'm going to describe it in the activity. So let me go back to the one I'm actually currently working on. So this is going to be my end gun. So what I want to do is I want, so I've got a little better on making my assignments. So I'll give these to the kids. I actually post this in my Google Classroom, but however you want to give it to them. I give this to the kids ahead of time, and this is where I kind of explain to them what I want to do. So they already know before they open up RoboBlockly. So basically, this is going to be um, an assignment for them to draw um, a function that does the n gone, meaning they can decide what number of sides it will have and how long it will be. So it's kind of a more advanced one. So my kids have been doing this for a while. And so just keep pushing them to do more um, abstract coding. So anyways, you can do a lot of cool stuff, even though you're using blocks. But anyways, you don't need to worry about this actual activity, although I'm you're welcome to try it. It's a great activity. But um, this is an idea of what they should look like. And by the way, I upload this to the activity portal so they'll actually have this ahead of time. And then they can just make the robot trace it. I've already told them the parameters of how far each side has to be. OK, so this is something that I will talk about with the students. So in order for them to understand that there's a lot of math in here that they already have to think about, like what is the regular polygon? What does the, that word actually mean? And what are the angles that they have to 
turn each time it creates a shape and then how much this so you can go through and read this more in detail and also review how to write a function with them um, my kids are actually coding now so we're actually trying to do this in coding but um, this obviously could be done without coding as I'll show you in a second so anyways once I get that all set up then I can go ahead what I do is I go to RoboBlockly and I actually complete it so I've already written the code for it so here's the function it um, takes the number of sides as a variable so there's two parameters the number of sides and the side length um, and then I just throw that in the loop and it's really actually pretty simple code the hardest part I guess for the students will be to figure out how many degrees that's why I asked the question how many degrees total and then how does it affected by the number of sides so once you've written the code you can actually start here actually that's kind of to be honest that's where I start here I get an idea in my head and I first build it and see how hard it is and if it's appropriate then I can go ahead and continue the activity um, and then once you've got it so it working then you've got all the stuff that you need so basically the files you need are um, well you need to have this so you can go ahead and save the grid there it is and by the way anytime you save it, it's just automatically by default so you're going to want to show this in your folder and move that into wherever you're putting this stuff so um, for me personally I'm going to be putting it onto my desktop so I'm going to actually move all of that stuff out of there. So before I do that, let me go ahead and save also the ch. So this is the ch file. So there's the ch. And notice it's also RoboBlockly too. So this is where it gets kind of annoying. So what you can do is you can just go to it. So RoboBlockly 2. And then you can just rename it here. So I'll just go ahead and call it ngon since all of these are ngon. And I'll just leave it like that. And uh, this one too, this is, you know, see how there's two of them because I've already done this in, in practice. So I'll just call it ngon. So since they're different file types, I don't have to worry about them having the same name because their extensions are different. And that'll group them together. So ngon is here and here. Um, let's see, what else do we need? We need to have the board. So you can go ahead over here to save board. And again, RoboBlockly is here. So let's show that and go there and change that to ngon. And we'll leave the extension. And so now I've got those. So there's the ngon, and there's the board, and there's the image. Now I have all three of those, and I've already created those things. So what I can do now, this is just how I am. I like to have everything organized in folders. So um, basically, here's my RoboBlockly. I've already created a folder for this activity, and I've got the Word document. And the reason I keep them both in PDF and Word, I always like to post as PDFs, but I like to, in case I change this, for example, like next year or something, oh, I actually didn't put a date on this, but if I wanted to change it, I don't have to convert it back from a PDF to uh, a Word document. Okay, so let's go ahead and drag these suckers in here. So we'll put the, uh, there's the board, um, here's the CH, um, and I, here's the image. Okay, so now I have all the files. I actually don't need both of these, but I, I do need all four of these. And so now I'm ready to create my activity. So let's go back in here. So I'm signed in and I want to create this activity. Now I'm just going to call it whatever I want. So this will be my ngon. Okay, and the description is write a function that will create a shape that is... All right, so anyways, get that in. So again, you can upload a background. So this is optional, but I like to do it because personally, I want them to be able to actually um, see what it should look like on there. So I'm going to go ahead and upload this as the background. So that, what that means is that this right here, this PNG, will show up and it will be the background for the activity. So they'll just see it already. And I'm going to state the problem here so they don't forget. So again, this is the details I hate. All right, so there's the problem statement, and then um, you can add parameters. So this is if they want. They can choose for a hint. So you can add parameters by clicking on the gear in the function and adding an input. Name the parameter whatever you want want and that variable will be created so if they you know I've already explained this to my students but in case they forget that will remind them how to do it 
All right, the solution is there. The board, we already have it here, so just add that. The solution for here is here. So this is why it seemed like at the beginning I was doing a lot of work, but the, the thing is I've done this a bunch, so if you get this all set up ahead of time, you can just breeze through this. Now, this right here is the description, so I use the PDF. Okay, and now when it comes to the video, I like to actually embed my own YouTube video. So instead of using it in here, I just paste in the, the code. So just use the YouTube, I post mine on YouTube and then just embed that code. So that'll work just fine. Okay, so all of this actually is still optional. So I'm just going to go ahead and submit the activity and let's see what I'm missing. Oh, I put my name on one thing. Okay, okay. Submit activity. All right. It looks like it worked. I didn't get any flags. So let's see if it's there. Yay, so it worked. So sometimes it doesn't seem like it's there because it's basically, I don't know why, <laughs> it's a glitch, I think. It, it brings you back to this. It, it does say it's been created, but it just deceivingly like looks like something's wrong. So, But if you actually check it by going to Activity Portal. See, and another thing I forgot to mention, this is actually really important. Um, keep two pages open. So one so you can test things, and one so that you can actually do your editing. Um, this is especially important if you are doing any of the coding and you were using that codes to fill in. So I did it all ahead of time, so I had all these files ahead and ready for me. But um, just in case, I always keep two tabs open. So that way you don't have to worry about it getting a loop um, erased. Okay. So anyways, I know that's a little bit longer than I expected, but hopefully that clears it up for you and then um, you're able to make your own activities and then share them with your classroom. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.